If you're familiar with open source operating systems, chances are that you've heard of React OS. React OS is an open source reverse engineering of the Windows NT kernel and user space, specifically NT 5.2, which is the basis for Windows Server 2003 and Windows XP 64-bit. And React OS is specifically based on Windows Server 2003. React OS started development in 1996 as a clone of Windows 95, called FreeWin 95. And if you know, Windows 95 isn't NT based. Rather, it was DOS-based. The project really didn't go anywhere and was abandoned until 1998, where it was revived as React OS, and the goals of the project changed. Instead of being Windows 9X-based, it was decided that the project should be NT-based, and the rest is history. That brings us into the current year, 2025. 29 years later, React OS is almost 30 years old. And after 29 years, the project is still in alpha. Even though it's still in alpha, it's a pretty fun OS to tinker with. And in this video, I'm actually going to install it onto real hardware. That being this Dell Inspiron 1525, released in 2008. It has an Intel Celeron 540 processor and a whopping 512 megabytes of RAM. It came with Windows Vista Home Basic Edition originally, and even though it's a 64-bit processor, I believe it came with Windows Vista 32-bit? I don't remember, but... 512 megabytes is an insanely small amount of RAM for Windows Vista. React OS's system requirements are very minimal. All it really needs is 64 megabytes of RAM, but the recommended amount is 256 megabytes, and this laptop is way above that out of the box. It does run fine with 512 megabytes of RAM, even using some browsers like the built-in Wine Internet Explorer and an old version of MyPal. It can browse the modern web, though you won't get too far with sites packed with JavaScript and multimedia features like YouTube. YouTube. I will be upgrading the RAM in this laptop, so stay tuned for that. I will also not be installing this in a virtual machine. If you want to install it in a virtual machine, VirtualBox offers the best performance for React OS. I usually use and prefer QEMU, and it does work, but the performance just isn't as good as VirtualBox. Maybe there's something I'm missing? I don't know. Anyway, I will be installing the latest version of React OS. My original plan was to use a nightly build, but since 0.4.15 just released, I will be using this build instead. This React OS image is 32-bit. Even though this is a 64-bit processor, the 64-bit builds of React OS simply don't boot on real hardware currently. At least not on the hardware I have. The 64-bit builds are just extremely underdeveloped anyway, as it's a pretty new addition to React OS, and they run badly on virtual machines. So I can't imagine what the performance would be like on real hardware, if you can get it to boot at all. So, the 64-bit builds are out of the question for now. I already have an old nightly build of React OS installed on this laptop. I'll just show the system information and general performance on this device before I upgrade the RAM and reinstall the OS. It runs fine, but I don't want to be limited by the 512 megabytes of RAM. So, I'm going to upgrade to a 4 gigabyte stick of RAM. Since this is an old laptop, all you gotta do is unscrew this plate on the bottom and just pop out the old RAM and put in the new stick. Nothing fancy. I wish laptops were still built like this, but that's a rarity now. Anyway, after installing the RAM, it boots just fine, though it did take a while on first boot. So, now I'm going to download the latest release of React OS. Once you download the image, it's time to burn it to a DVD. Yes, you gotta burn it to a DVD. React OS still doesn't support USB booting by default without modifying the ISO image. Luckily, React OS installs lightning fast from a DVD, as it's such a small OS. If you've ever installed Windows XP, then this installer might look very familiar. It's a straight up clone of the Windows XP installer, but React OS is a straight up clone of Windows to begin with. So it's really not that surprising, is it? But I'm really impressed by how similar it looks. Anyway, the first phase of the React OS setup is nothing too special. You just set up the language, keyboard layout, and partition. This is just installing the base system and not setting up any user information. You'll also get this React OS status screen, telling you that this is alpha quality software and it's not ready for any kind of daily use. After the installation copies over some base files, the system will reboot and we're now in the final setup wizard. You can now set up a user account and other settings like locale, time zone, and themes. There's two themes that I really like. The first one is the classic theme. This is obviously the Windows classic theme from the 9X and 2 2000 era. The other theme I like is the Lunar theme, which is loosely based on the default Windows XP Luna theme. I'll just stick with the classic theme. After that, the system will reboot and the installation is finished. You will be booted to the desktop, which looks almost identical to Windows 2000. On first boot, you'll be greeted with a bunch of driver install wizard pop-ups. They will all fail because I don't have any drivers stored on this laptop yet. 
React OS does in fact detect the 4GB of RAM I installed. I will show off some of the applications React OS comes with. First thing I'm going to do is change the screen resolution. It can use the screen's native resolution, which is pretty impressive since it doesn't have any kind of dedicated graphics driver installed. It's only using the basic driver the system comes with. The first application I'm going to show is Command Prompt, or CMD. It has most of the basic commands that I'm familiar with, but I believe some are missing. I do know disk part is feature incomplete, but I can't think of any other commands that are missing or not fully implemented. Next is MS Paint, or I guess React Paint in this case. It's an exact clone of the Windows 2000 and XP Paint. I made my very first YouTube videos using MS Paint in Windows Movie Maker back in 2010 on Windows XP, so Paint in Movie Maker is where it all started for me, and many others as well. Too bad there is no open source React OS clone of Windows Movie Maker. That would be absolutely amazing. Call it React Movie Maker. And I did try to run XP Movie Maker on React OS, but it gave me an error about not finding an audio driver, because the audio driver won't install on this hardware. I could try it in a virtual machine since I can get the audio to work on QEMU and VirtualBox, but I've not tested it yet. Moving on to Notepad now. It's an exact clone of Notepad. Nothing really special about it. It does bring back some memories of those old notepad tutorials though. I will be showing the built-in web browser, but first we need to install a network driver. I downloaded the drivers from Dell's website and put them on this USB flash drive. I also have some software on this flash drive that I will be testing. Before I do that, I will shut down React OS first, and then plug in the USB drive, as it likes to crash if you plug in a USB device while it's running. After that, React OS can now happily read the USB drive with no issues. So I did download a few drivers for this, those being the chipset driver and the ethernet driver. Spoiler alert, I can only get the ethernet driver to work. The chipset driver installs, but seems to do nothing at all. And wireless isn't an option. React OS just doesn't have any implemented support for Wi-Fi currently, so that's off the table for now. So the first driver I will install is the Ethernet. It installs just fine with no issues. I will install the chipset driver even though it seems to do nothing. After that, I will reboot and plug in an Ethernet cable. Once rebooted and with an Ethernet cable inserted, we are now online on React OS, on real hardware. To double check that I'm online, I'm going to run the ping command. And I'm getting a response, so it is working. So now I'm going to try the built-in web browser, Wine Internet Explorer. React OS does use Wine's libraries to function. Now the release images of React OS already come with the package Wine Gecko Engine pre-installed, but if you install it on Nightly Build without internet, the package will fail to install, as it has to download it from their servers, which it will ask you during the second phase of the install. Without this package, Wine Internet Explorer will not be able to render any HTML. So if nothing renders in Wine Internet Explorer, go to the React OS Application Manager, search for the Wine Gecko Engine package, and install it. Like I said, the release images already come with it bundled on the installation media, so this is only necessary for the nightly builds. Opening the browser, it defaults to reactos.org. Now it doesn't seem to like JavaScript very much, so some sites will be unusable. But if you find JavaScript free sites, then it's pretty usable, and I think it's the fastest browser you can use on React OS currently. But video streaming is completely out of the question due to how limited this browser is. The browsers I really want to try on here are MyPal and Supermium. MyPal is a browser based on Firefox Quantum 68, at least the new version of MyPal is, and Supermium is based on the latest versions of Chromium. These are modern browsers designed to work on Windows XP, so they will be perfect to test on React OS. But will they run? Let's find out. First of all, MyPal is already in the React OS Application Manager, but it's the old version, based on Pale Moon, which is another browser you may have heard of. This version is pretty out of date now, but still works decently well. Though it can render most JavaScript, some sites have trouble loading some JavaScript elements. YouTube and other kinds of media streaming ain't gonna happen on this browser either. It also likes to lock up and crash sometimes, even crashing the entire system with it. But a lot of software on React OS does that. So, on the same flash drive that I installed the drivers from, I also have a tiny repository of software, mainly the latest versions of MyPal and Superbium. I extracted it from its zip file and copied it to the desktop. And while it's copying, take a look at this neat animation. I love little details like that. Anyway, on first boot, the browser was completely unresponsive. It also locked up the entire system, so I had to hard reset. The second time around though, it actually started up. I could go to Wikipedia and the React OS website. It was doing pretty well, until I decided to go to YouTube.com, and that's when disaster struck. The browser completely locked up again, but the system was still fine, so I managed to close it using Task Manager. I decided to reboot and try it one more time, 
And well, it locked up on the session restore page, and I could not get any farther than that. I could have deleted the config files to reset the browser, but I decided to leave it at that and move on to Supermium now. Supermium installed just fine, but once launched, it throws me this error message about user profiles, and then it just hangs in the background and never opens. It also locked up the entire system again. Yay. After another hard reset, Supermium never opened and kept giving me the same error. These modern browsers just ain't going to work. They seem to work just fine on Windows XP, but not on React OS sadly. Let's move on from web browsers and onto games. I'm only going to be testing a few 2D games on here, and some emulation of very old consoles as I want to give this thing a fair chance, as it doesn't have a GPU driver and no 3D acceleration. So no 3D games. Most of the games I will be testing are in the React OS Application Manager. First I'm going to be trying Cave Story, the classic Japanese indie game. The full game is in the React OS Application Manager, and well, it runs perfectly on React OS. The game runs at full speed, no lag whatsoever. Only one issue though. There was no audio, since I could not get the audio driver working. Other than that, it's completely playable. You might be able to complete the entire game. But the lack of sound makes it unplayable for me, so let's move on. Next is Celeste Classic C. It's a port of the Pico 8 game Celeste, but written in the C programming language to run natively on Windows. You'd think it would run just fine, being such a simple game, but no, it runs in slow motion. The frame rate isn't the worst, it does make the game a little easier, but I'd rather play at full speed. So, on to the next game. Next game is Mario, with the Zero, which is Super Mario Bros. 1, but with a portal gun. Now, I've actually never heard of this game until I found it in the React OS Application Manager. This seems like a Flash game I would have played on Newgrounds decades ago. It reminds me a lot of Super Mario Bros. Crossover, if anyone remembers that game. There actually is a browser version of this game if you want to check it out, or you can download it for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It's also open source, so that's cool. Anyway, the game doesn't run very well. It has low frame rate, it pretty much runs in slow motion like the last game, but you can do the infinite portal fallen trick in Super Mario Brothers at least. Next game is another Mario fan game, just simply called Mario and Luigi. This game looks very familiar, I swear I might have played this on Newgrounds or somewhere. It reminds me of Super Mario Flash. This game also suffers from low frame rate, but holding the run button speeds it up a bit. The controls are super wonky as well. You press ALT to jump, space to throw a fireball, and hold control to run. On the second level, the frame rate dropped even more, and this is where I stopped playing. Other than that, the game seems fine. It's just the low frame rate and the lack of audio that makes it unplayable. Last game I'm going to test is one of my favorites, Super Tux. The version in the React OS Application Manager is 0.5.1, which is an old version. I did not test the latest version. Starting the game, you get the same issues as before, low frame rate. But in this case, extremely low frame rate. This is not playable at all. Luckily, messing around with the settings and resizing the window, I could get it to run perfectly, but in a tiny window. The camera zooms in very close to Tux, and the HUD resizes to fit. I had no idea idea Super Tux could do this, and it's actually a neat feature. The game is now completely playable though. It runs just as good as Cave Story, but it's stuck in a tiny window. Now, let's move on from native Windows games to some emulation. I'm going to emulate the Atari 2600 and the NES using RetroArch. RetroArch still supports Windows XP, so I downloaded the XP build and put it on my flash drive. It installed perfectly with no issues. Upon starting though, the UI is very laggy and things only got worse from here. I downloaded the Stella and Neztopia cores and put some homebrew ROMs on the flash drive. First I'll be testing the Atari 2600 with one of my favorite homebrew games, Pac-Man 8K. And well... Yeah, it's extremely unplayable. The performance of the emulation is way worse than the native games, as you can tell by this footage. Even speeding up the emulation does nothing. I don't know why I bothered trying NES emulation next, but I did. I tried it with the game Streamers, which is a homebrew remake of the Action 52 game of the same name. It's one of the best homebrew NES games in my opinion, but it's completely unplayable on React OS unfortunately. I could not even get to the gameplay due to how slow the emulation was, so I called it quits there. That was all the software I wanted to test on React OS. I also want to note that the performance issues are most likely due to the hardware I'm using and the lack of work in drivers. Performance may vary on different hardware and virtual machine setups. 
So, after all that, React OS did crash a few times, but it did not blue screen or become unbootable. Only a few years ago, installing third party software and hard resetting React OS too many times would have completely corrupted the system. But I'm actually impressed that the system still boots and runs fine after all that. React OS has come a long way in that regard, though it's still pretty unstable. Now, I did not test much software in this video, so maybe it would have bricked itself if I installed more software? Who knows? So, what do I think of React OS? It's an interesting project and a fun one to tinker with once in a while. I've kept my eyes on this project for maybe 5 or 6 years now and the changes are definitely noticeable. It's a lot more stable now, obviously I had some crashes, but the system didn't brick itself after multiple hard resets, so that's progress. And seeing a new release is nice, as the last version, 0.4.14, was released in 2021, 4 years ago now. Hopefully the React OS team can make new releases more often. So if you're interested in this project, download either the latest release or a nightly build, and give it a shot in a virtual machine. Or if you're brave enough, try it on real hardware. I would recommend using older hardware. It could possibly boot on some newer hardware, but I've not had any luck with that. I would also recommend testing this on hardware you're not using daily, but that should be obvious. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here. That was my experience with React OS on this Dell laptop.